Hey folks, I um, just want to talk to you about lipoproteins uh, and just an introduction that includes uh, triglycerides and cholesterols, uh, HDL and LDL and I'm going to talk more about all of those but that's what this video will be about. So lipoproteins are the way that your body stores fat uh, and it's very different from the way that you uh, digest and uh, eat, consume and digest fat. So if you haven't listened to my video about dietary fat, I would suggest you do that at the end of this video. Uh, the way your body manages fat is by storing the molecules, uh, collectively referred to as lipoproteins. As the name suggests, they contain both lipids, which is fat, as well as proteins, hence the name lipoprotein. This gives them uh, their structure and their function. Lipids, or fat, normally don't like water, um, which makes them hydrophobic, but attaching those proteins makes them more uh, hydrophilic and allows them to move better around the body for various purposes. Uh, and you know, we are after all made up of 60% water, so you can see why that would be important. So the purpose of lipoproteins is to transport uh, the things that they contain. There are two different general clusters of lipoproteins, uh, HDL, or high density lipoproteins, and LDL, or low density lipoproteins. HDL is what doctors and dietitians usually refer to as the good lipid. And the way that I tell my patients to remember that, it's very easy, is that H stands for healthy. Uh, so H in the HDL is healthy. LDL is the bad lipid, and is actually uh, the most well-known of a spectrum of different lipoproteins, such as intermediate density, uh, very low density lipoprotein, and chylomicrons. You don't often hear those discussed, so I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, I'm just going to focus on HDL and LDL in this video, but I thought that they were uh, worth mentioning. The purpose of these lipoproteins is to help deliver their contents to body tissues. Think of the liver as the home base for a lot of different metabolic functions. And so LDL and its cousins, their job is to transport those, uh, the, co their, the contents, which I get into, the contents of the LDL away from the liver to the rest of the body. And then the HDL's job is to transfer those contents from the rest of the body back to the liver. So these lipoproteins contain four different molecular classes. The first two I'm just going to mention briefly because they aren't really huge uh, uh, factors in this particular lecture. Uh, one is protein, and that basically serves as the part of the structure that allows them to get around the body, as well as receptors for these lipoproteins to talk to other cells. The second are the so-called phospholipids, and these are, excuse me, the lipids that serve as a major component of the cellular membrane. Uh, and again, just more of a structure, less function with those. And um, it's worth mentioning that of all the lipoproteins, the HDL contains more protein and more phospholipids than LDL. So the third component, these are the two things that, that, that the HDL and LDL carry. The third component is uh, cholesterol, and uh, this is not a lecture about cholesterol, but it has a complex molecular structure. It's very similar to steroids that your body uses. Uh, it's a precursor to many of the steroids that your body produces uh, and uses, as well as things like vitamin D and bile. Its concentration is higher in LDL than in HDL. The fourth thing is uh, triglycerides, or TAG sometimes you'll see. The tri signifies the three fatty acid chains attached to a glyceride backbone, so triglyceride. Um, and they're the major way that your body stores fat, such as saturated and unsaturated fats, as well as any other fats your body might produce or that you may consume. And I'm not going to get into that anymore right now. So why do, I, why do you care about this? This is a question you should be asking, hopefully. Uh, well, these lipoproteins in, in, impact your health uh, in pretty major ways. So the big concern here is dyslipidemia, which is an abnormal blood lipid, or hyperlipidemia, which is too high of a blood lipid level. And those two things uh, can cause atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is the process by which artery walls thicken from plaque formation from those lipids. They get deposited in the walls of the artery and it causes it to narrow over time. These plaques can subsequently rupture, travel through the arteries until they get stuck and stop blood flow. And this is often what causes strokes and heart attacks. So, which, uh, you know, top five killers in the country right there. So you can see why um, atherosclerosis and lipoproteins are important. So just a little bit more specific information about how they affect your health. Uh, LDL, uh, high blood levels correlate with an increased risk of atherosclerosis and coronary heart disease. HDL, uh, a low level, correlates with increased risk of atherosclerosis. In other words, normal and high HDL values are cardioprotective, reducing the risk. Remember that HDL is the healthy lipoprotein. Cholesterol, uh, increased cholesterol associated with an increased risk of atherosclerosis and cardiovascular events. You may see it presented on lab work as a cholesterol to HDL ratio or something like that, but the gist of it is the same. Uh, and lastly, triglycerides are also a risk factor for coronary heart disease. 
So how can you improve your lipid profile? Good question. So standard lipid profile from your doctor will measure LDL, HDL, cholesterol, triglycerides, and we'll compare the ratios of some of those. Um, the three things that you really need to be able to do, take into serious consideration, are diet, exercise, and weight loss, as they've all been proven to uh, improve parts or all of your lipid profile. And that's sort of the standard recommendation from any uh, medical provider. Supplementing your diet with niacin, fish oil, and red yeast can help your lipid profile. The Mediterranean and DASH diets have, been also, uh, have also been shown to improve your lipid profile. And then uh, non-pharmacologic, that is non-drug therapy, can in some people be inadequate to keep your levels in the appropriate range. So uh, please talk to your physician or seek medical attention if you have a history of abnormal lipid levels or strong family history of the same. Uh, so there are some recommendations by a governing body called the United States Preventative Services Task Force that recommends screening for all men over 35 and all women over 45 for dyslipidemia. So if you have a personal or family history that suggests you're at risk, you should consult your doctor. Um, target blood levels vary depending on risk factors and comorbidities, um, but as a general rule, the following targets are what are currently recommended in the medical literature. And those goals are a cholesterol below 200, an LDL less than 100, a triglycerides less than 150, and HDL over 60. So in summary, there's uh, seven points I just want to emphasize. Uh, the first is lipoproteins are a generic name describing the way that your body stores fat. Number two, as the name suggests, they're composed of lipids and proteins. Number three, one lipoprotein is HDL, which is the healthy one, so the higher the better. Number four, the other big one is uh, LDL, which is the unhealthy one, and the lower the better. Cholesterol and triglyceride are stored in both HDL and LDL. Number six, diet, exercise, and weight loss are the best ways to get started with lowering your high lipid values. And lastly, please talk to your physician about screening for dyslipidemia. Good luck.